Welcome back to the Scottabite channel, and this is Scott. Well, about four hours ago, Matthew Penning at Penning Labs released version 0.5.1 of Lex Console. So here we are looking at his um, GitHub page, and you can see that release 0.5.1 was released. And I'm going to go over here and click on his roadmap section. And he says version 0.5.0 plus is going to add bootstrap note, uh, toast notifications, add some warnings, and add some instant start times. And actually, there's some pretty significant other features that we want to take a look at. But just in terms of looking forward, he says that in version 0.6.0, .0, He's going to add a 2FA, two-factor authentication option, and he's going to add the password complexity requirements option for the logon to Lex console. And then in 070, he's going to add support for both uh, Maria database and Postgres database as a backend to store information for Lex console. And then in 0 0.8.0, um, he says he's going to add some off-canvas sidebars where appropriate for additional information and include rename tasks in tables with edit form on the new tab. And then finally, he's going to have a release 1.0.0, which will begin the stable releases. So here's the Lex console login screen, which is really not significantly different from the login screen in previous versions. I'm going to go ahead and log into mine with uh, Bitwarden. And now that I'm logged in, you can see in the lower right hand corner, it says version 0.5.1. The first thing you'll notice on the screen is that the actions buttons, which are off to the right, are no longer the really light gray, but there are the bolded options that you can see much better, and also making it obvious that those options are selectable. If you go up to the upper right-hand corner where your username is displayed and click on it, you'll notice that there is a new dark mode. And so that's been a long time in coming, and I really like that option. So I'm going to go over to my server named VMS Rain, and the reason I'm going there is because there are a number of options we want to look at. So I'm going over to my Incas virtual machines, and first of all, I'm going to go to a virtual machine by the name of Desktop. Again, notice off to the right that the actions buttons are no longer the lighter gray, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my desktop, which is an Ubuntu desktop. And then I'm going to go over to console. And under the console option, we now have the ability to enable VGA. If I have VGA off and I start the console, I get a login screen as you would expect. If I stop the console and enable VGA, since this Incas virtual machine is an Ubuntu virtual machine with a desktop. When I start the console, I'm going to get a GUI login screen. I can go ahead and click on it and type my password and it will log me in to this Incas virtual machine with the full desktop GUI. I can either log out of my desktop GUI or I can go ahead and scroll up and say that I want to stop the console and it will exit the GUI console. I notice that if I start the console again, I'll still be logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and log out with the log out option in Ubuntu. And when I do a log out, I will typically, in an Incas virtual machine, uh, get something that looks kind of like this for whatever reason. I've tested it with a few Incas virtual machines, 
But I have noticed, interestingly enough, if I choose his Control-Alt-Delete option here, then it goes ahead and uh, it looks like it's rebooting, but it's not really rebooting. What it's doing is it's going ahead and refreshing the console. I'm going to go ahead and um, go back up here again and say stop the console and then I'll restart the console and that should get me back to the GUI login screen or at least it did earlier. And there you go. So let's go back up to my instances and back over to my virtual machine instances and you notice here that I have a Windows 11 virtual machine. For those of you that have Windows 11 virtual machines or are wondering, you will typically never see the IP address if you're bridged back to the main LAN. And the reason for that is because that requires instrumentation inside of the container. And by default, these containers are normally um, Linux containers. And so Windows 11 doesn't have any Linux instrumentation. In any event, I'll go ahead and click on my Windows 11 option, move over to console in it, and start a console. And likewise, we end up with the login, but one of the things that you're probably noticing here is that um, it is not adjusting the scale of the screen accordingly. And I've already pointed that out to Matthew, and I'm sure he's looking at that. But I can go ahead and log in, and then once I'm logged in, I can scroll up and down, or I could change the screen size to match. So I could hit a right click here on the desktop, and I could go ahead and say display settings. And when display settings comes up, I should be able to adjust the resolution. And I'll go ahead and go down to 1024 by 768 and say keep changes and there we go it should have adjusted that accordingly so I'll go ahead and dismiss this if I can and there we are we do have a screen that actually fits in here although it's not scaled to match this particular screen exactly and then likewise I can go ahead and click on this click on my Scott username and sign out and this one should go back and give me the Windows login screen without a problem and there we go. Something else that was a recent addition but probably not in this version 0.5.1 is if you go over to the images column we now see an alias for the various images that you've downloaded. And just as a reminder, when you install a new container, you will go ahead and get a new image. But also you can have some custom images defined. For example, I have one here called Ubuntu-2404-Docker, which says it's Ubuntu 2404 with Docker added in and the Scott account. And in my images video, I describe that. Now if I go back to the instances listing, you'll see all of my containers listed here. Somehow I recall that there was supposed to be a new option here showing when a particular container has been started or showing how long that particular container has been up and running. So I'm not seeing it from that listing there. Uh, let's see, it says when the container was created, that's been there for a while, but I don't see the option saying when it was started, and I do recall from the discussions that I had with Matthew that that was supposed to be an option. So I'll have to go back and ask him about that. Uh, the other thing I like, and I don't believe this has changed, if we go down to the profiles option, you see all of your profiles listed, and as a really interesting example, I have a profile on this server called Dual VLAN, and it has um, device ETH0, ETH1, and it even defines my root device for the storage pool, 
which I talked about in the last video about profiles. So you can be pretty creative with your profiles. If you haven't seen that video, uh, go back and watch um, Incas Profile Tricks and you'll learn about how I create some of those types of uh, options. So with that in mind, let's go take a look and see how we update Lex Console. Just as a reminder, my previous version of Lex Console here is version 0.4.8. So that's what we're going to be upgrading from. If you have any previous version of Lex Console and you followed my tutorial entitled um, Lex Console Web Interface for Incus, then you should probably be at version 0.4.8. Here I am logged into my Lex Console Incus container and if I do an LS after logging in I have a Lex Console folder which is how I showed to install Lex Console in the uh, tutorial entitled Lex Console Web Interface for Incus. So now if I CD into Lex Console and do another LS, we have the certs folder and we have the server folder as well as the Docker Compose. So let's do a Docker space Compose space Pull and it will pull the latest version of Lex Console, which in this case is version 0.5.1, at least as of May 22nd, 2024. Now that the pull operation has been completed, we're going to do a Docker Compose space Stop Lex Console. And for housekeeping purposes, we'll go ahead and do a Docker Compose RM Lex Console and say, yes, we would like to remove it. And it goes ahead and removes that container image. And now finally, we do a Docker Compose up space dash D, and that will go ahead and start the new Lex Console 0.5.1 container. Now that the Lex console has been upgraded and restarted, you can verify that with a Docker space PS. And there you see that we have Lex console running. So now we're done with the console and we can go ahead and log out of the terminal for the Lex console container. And now back on our web browser, if I go ahead and use my Bitwarden to sign into my Lex console, when it logs in, it is at version 0.5.1. Lex console is a fantastic project and I encourage you to support Matthew Penning over on his GitHub page. In any event, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.